Diablo Immortal was supposed to launch this week in China. Earlier today, NetEase, Tencent's biggest competitor in China, announced that Diablo Immortal's China launch is delayed indefinitely. NetEase was set to launch the Blizzard mobile game, which for some reason got released on PC still in the West, on Thursday the 23rd of June. Why is this important news and a threat to Activision Blizzard's financial well-being? Let's find out. The Blizzchunk Hearthstone ban controversy in late 2019 started the worst years in Blizzard's history yet. Not from a financial standpoint, mind you. However, the company's reputation just took hit after hit after hit, starting from that moment in time. Blizzchunk, a professional Hearthstone player from Hong Kong, voiced his support for the anti-China Hong Kong protests in 2019-2020 during a streaming event, Blizzard reacting by banning him and after public outrage and the planned boycott of Activision Blizzard products, decided to reduce Blizzard's ban to six months and reinstate his winnings. Blizzard president J. Allen Brack, who eventually left the company in August 2021, stated at the time that our relationships in China had no influence on our decision. China's PC and mobile games market is massive and continuing to grow. Of course, Activision Blizzard has relationships in China and does not want them to be affected by PR scandals. It could actually be argued that while the Blizzard reputation has been irreparably damaged in the West, the company's reputation and revenue in China has continued to grow over the past two to three years. By the way, this doesn't mean Activision Blizzard's revenue was affected in any way in America or Europe, as we can see in this chart. It continued to grow in all regions, seemingly unaffected by the scandals that have plagued the company over the past years. Why is China so important for the company then? Two reasons. Unlimited upside potential for revenue in the region. In order to launch Diablo Immortal in China, Blizzard partnered with NetEase, which is the main competitor of Tencent, the biggest internet and online entertainment company in China right now. Tencent already owns Riot Games, but also Grinding Gear Games, who developed the successful loot-driven ARPG Path of Exile, a competitor for Diablo 1, I say and 20-25% of the indie developer 11 Power Games, who is looking to release its hack and slash loot driven RPG Last Epoch, later this year. The second reason why China is so important for Blizzard's financial success is that Blizzard has shifted its direction from making really good games focused on gameplay and focusing on gamer satisfaction first. This trend can be followed back from the real Money Auction House in Diablo 3, Lootbox Bonanza in Overwatch, and the aggressive, almost predatory monetization of the card game Hearthstone, who, by the way, which was originally developed by a team of 16 house developers, so almost no investment costs, unlimited upside revenue. Today, Blizzard is more a mobile game company than ever, a label that has been well earned and sealed forever since the release of Diablo Immortal in the West. Blizzard, ever since it was acquired by Activision back in 2008, has shifted from a development, gameplay-first company, to an accountant company. And the accountants say that Blizzard's biggest chance for even more revenue and profit is in China right now. I don't know why they had to release Diablo Immortal on PC as well, because the public backlash and uproar, especially from PC gamers has been a sight to behold and it wasn't pretty false. All the while game developers did not respond to any concerns from fans and only encouraged laudatory social media posts instead. By the way, this hasn't stopped Diablo Immortal from raking in $24 million in the first two weeks only from release, which is astounding for a free-to-play game. And this is before the actual release of the game in China, of course, and other markets in Asia. I'm not going to the predatory monetization and pay-to-win practices of this so-called uh, free-to-play game, as this has been extensively covered in other media outlets too, and is not the purpose of this video. 
My conclusion is that Blizzard has shifted from the gaming company that brought us some of the most beloved franchises ever created in the interactive media space. Warcraft, Starcraft and Diablo. It is now a mobile game company looking to get even stronger in China, which is today arguably the biggest gaming market in the world by revenue. Look for other Western gaming giants to follow the same trend in the future and I would say think twice before spending your money so that the likes of Bobby Kotick, Activision Blizzard CEO, to, to buy more yachts. You know what I mean? While Activision and therefore also Blizzard have been acquired by Microsoft earlier this year, the actual transaction might not be finalized by 2023. So one would expect Microsoft to reform the company's toxic management and greed is good practices, but this may take years if it will ever be solved at all. So are you still eagerly awaiting Diablo 4? <laughs> Let me know in the comments and as always, a like and subscribe go a long way. Thank you for watching and take care out there. Bye.